Mechan 2410, Engineering Materials, Tutorial 5, Deformation Mechanism, and Strengthening Mechanism. We learned these locations in Tutorial 2 and Plastic Deformations in Tutorial 4. And actually, one important plastic deformation mechanism for metals is this location slip, which is related to the motions of the dislocations. And in this tutorial, we will talk about how these locations inside crystal structures can be moved and how can it be related to plastic deformation and the strengthening mechanisms related to such mechanism, which is dislocation slip. Here is a summary of concepts that I'm going to talk about in this tutorial. And the first is the deformation mechanism in theory, which is the theoretical method, and in reality, which is the dislocation slip. And the idea of this slip direction and slip plane and mixed law for single crystal. Strengthening mechanism, green boundary strengthening, string work hardening, solid solution strengthening, and precipitation hardening. And non conservation movement of dislocations, effect of temperature on strength and the effect of string rate. Tutorial 5, part 1, dislocation motion and deformation mechanism. In theory, if, when we try to deform a solid, we must break all the bondings at the slip plane, which is shown here. As atoms are bound by bondings inside a solid, the bondings can be any kinds of bondings. For example, like ionic bond, covalent bond, or metallic bond. And by this theoretical deformation method, the force and the energy required to do this is very, very large, which does not match with the experimental value. And there is a discrepancy between the theory and the actual values for different kinds of materials, and such as the values for U strength. And basically, the method is we try to break all the bonds at the slip plane, and it can form something like this. But I just just like I have just said, it is not likely as the theoretical result does not match with the experimental result. And therefore, a new default mechanism is proposed and it is actually related to this location movement within a crystalline solid. So, if the materials contain dislocations, dislocations itself can move to deform a solid under external force. And only very few bondings need to break at the same time when it moves. And that means the force requires is much more lower and which, which match with the actual values, for example, new strength. And it can be used using a warm and basically when we try to look at these pictures down here let's look at the first picture here the red line matches the bondings you need to break when these, lo these locations try to move from the first picture the location of first picture to the locations within the second picture and so the slip plane is still circled by this green circle. 
and you can see that by this way only very few number of bondings need to break simultaneously and that means force required is much more lower and it match with the actual values and finally after the dislocation moves out it will deform the material just like show is shown as at picture four dislocation step is highly related to edge dislocations or screw dislocations and edge and screw dislocations are two distinct types of dislocations for materials with edge dislocations and screw dislocations when a shear stress is applied on it a subsequent bonding breaking and bond forming process are occurred to the plane near the dislocation plane resulting in a slipping behavior during deformation and picture here i borrow it from book it actually shown some basic terminologies of the dislocation slip mechanism the first thing is the slip plane it is quite easy to understand basically is the plane where it slips where the dislocation slips and basically here is the edge dislocations in uh, in this picture and this one is actually a uh, edge dislocations and it is it is very very similar with the pictures in the last slide but this one is 3d version and the principles are basically the same and you can see that here is uh, the final result and edge dislocations and screw dislocations have different effects when we try to deform it in terms of the dislocation slip mechanism for edge dislocations the moving direction of the dislocations of edge dislocations is parallel to the direction of the force as shown in the first picture and it is quite straightforward because you can also observe it from the last picture in the last few slides but for school dislocations it is quite special as the moving direction of the dislocation motion is perpendicular to the direction of the force as shown in the second feature here it has a different for different direction and actually this location itself can interact with each other for example what will happen if two dislocation planes come to each other force for two parallel dislocations of the same steep plane a repulsive force will be insert on each other you can just remember it as two like charges and it is shown in feature here there is a repulsive force and for two anti-parallel dislocations on the same C plane an attractive force will be insert on each other you can consider it as a you can memorize it as a opposite charge opposite sign charge and they will cancel each other when they meet but however in real cases in real world cases as we know that the solid itself is three-dimensional so this location itself can hardly to be at the same plane and they may tangle with each other and it can be observed in many many experiments and apart from these motions of these locations which is mainly about dislocation slip there are also some non-conservative motion of dislocations for example one is one case is the dislocation climb basically the dislocation plane move hour during to a presence of vacancy 
For first feature, we show you can show here. There is a vacancy here, and actually, you can move outward because of the existence of this vacancy. And this usually happens at a temperature higher than 0.3 times the melting point of that particular material. 